Like an eye, a camera uses a lens to focus light onto an image recording area. An iris or aperture is adjusted to control the quantity of light passing through. The exposure of an eye is not critical, but if we over or underexpose film or digital images, they eventually become completely black or white. These black and white extremes form an exposure window. Our aim is to capture as many tones as we can between these white and black points. Unlike an eye, a camera has a second light control, the shutter. This determines how long each exposure takes. Doubling or halving the shutter speed adjusts the exposure by one unit. This measurement is known as a stop. The aperture and shutter speed must be combined correctly to capture just the right amount of light and record the full range of tones in a scene. The measurement or metering of light allows the photographer to arrive at the correct exposure. Too much light causes overexposure and too little underexposure. Even if this happens to a small degree, image detail is lost, which can never be recovered. When an image is underexposed, shadow details begin to form black blocks and the contrast drops. If we use Photoshop or printing techniques to adjust the levels to normal, colours become weak and pastely, and the picture looks grainy, lacking subtle tones and fine details. When an image is overexposed, contrast increases and highlight areas start to become blocks of white. As over and underexposure increases, the white or black areas spread out. Films have different sensitivities to light, or speed ratings, which are measured in ISO. Fast film like 1600 ISO is very sensitive, so it tends to be used in low light. A slow speed, such as 50 ISO, needs more light, so it is normally used in daylight, and a medium speed like 400 ISO is used for general purposes. On digital cameras, the ISO rating can also be adjusted for the level of light. The slower the ISO, the more detail and the richer the tones it produces. You also get less grain or noise from slower ISO speeds.